Hello, this is the Clay Golem. We are kind of back in Foundry, but we're looking at something slightly different first. Uh, so, uh, the last kind of video we did was the showcase of how the Curse of Strahd is going to work from a player's perspective. Um, and this epic name sent me through what you can see on the screen, which is just a picture of their setup as the DM. You can see Monk's active tile setup for Foundry VTT. This is their playing area. And isn't it beautiful? And then I looked at my DM area. <laughs> and for shame. Uh, buttons of different sizes all over the place. And, and this inspired me to be better. Um, yeah, the player bit was all fine. That all worked. Messy on the back end though. We can do better. And I want to be able to enjoy the experience and have pretty things to look at as well when I'm running the game. Um, so thank you ever so much for sending through this um uh, this epic name um, yeah really really beautiful some of the things you can do um, so I wanted to show you what uh, I have done I've done a few little updates uh, to our scenes um, oh that's not quite fitting where I want it to be let's uh, move that out a bit here and there and we get rid of uh, that so on the right hand side I need to reset it of course <laughs> should have done that before starting the video hey um, so I've made a few changes and I just wanted to show you. So on the left hand side we have the DM screen, that's probably quite obvious. And on the right hand side we have Haley's view. Um, and not a lot has changed with any of these. Um, so this initial, um, just reset that, one of the things left open. Uh, so one of the uh, the initial landing page, nothing's changed there. Uh, mysterious visitors, <coughs> activate, thank you very much. Uh, that's not changed either. I'm quite happy with that, but I have done some alterations just to show you. I've still got these not so pretty buttons down the side, but it works and at least those ones are square. Uh, if we go to this one, which is where things start to kind of kick off a bit. Get back over there, Hayley. Um, this is where I... it was a mess. <laughs> So you can see that on Haley's side, on the right-hand side of the screen here, Haley can't see anything in the padding. Um, is only looking at the actual images I want to see, which is good. But in my DM screen, I have tidied up all of these buttons and made a few alterations. So what have I done that's different? Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing is I've got Haley's character down here. So I've got her token on there. Uh, yes, of course, I could put it down in the macro thing, but it's quick access if me, me as the DM wants to access it. But also, it's going to enable me to automate something else. Now, if they party hang around in the woods and don't get a shifty on, they the, the, the wolf howl noises that should get them to shifty on. If they don't, they will get attacked. So I've got my wolves here ready to go. And I just updated the picture of this so it's kind of fitted in a bit better with what I needed. And I just used a couple of different images so we're not all looking at the same wolf exactly the same time. But those tokens are not going to appear on the board. So I'm no, no battle map, sort of. So what have I done differently? Okay, so I'm um, just running through these fog and dim. So this fog and dim button's not doing anything different than it was before. So on the right hand side, that's slowly dimming. The fog is coming in. We've got the gates of Ravenloft that appear. Um, when they get there, of course, they go through the gates. And I've put a bit of a sound effect on just for them closing gates. Uh, and it changes the scene. We've got the corpse that comes on with no wolf noise because I've separated them out um, but I can do them myself just by manually clicking on those buttons anytime I want to apply a little bit of pressure but I have added a button about reading the letter if they find the letter here it's like yeah I can I can activate it back in the main scene but actually I can just click this and it activates that journal and as you can see on the right hand side opens it up for the players who can then read it immediately um, so they don't need to go back to the landing page so that's a change i made just so that we can do that and of course i can toggle that corpse off um, now what i've done different for the wolf attack is it does a couple of things so uh, if you keep your eye on the right hand side on Haley's side when i click this button 
plays a wolf howl. It's changing the scene to this wooded scene with a couple of wolves and it's put her into combat and on the left hand side we can see exactly how many. Now any of these I can just... Um, come on, do it. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Screen's too small where I've got it uh, kind of shrunk down. But any of these I can make visible um, if I can manage to hit that bit without hitting the dice. Come on, roll your initiatives. There we go. I can make these visible as and when. So I'm not necessarily giving away when these wolves are um, actually entering combat. And it means I can remove any if I think, oh blimey, hang on, a six is going to be too many for this party. Um, so I can just edit it. That. Uh, so I thought that was a kind of a nice touch. I can just click a button and it will start combat and everybody, add everybody into combat. That's why I needed the tokens on here. So I am going to show you what I did with that. So obviously just a monk's token trigger. That's all it is, like everything else we're using. Uh, what am I doing? First of all, I'm showing this woodland tile. So this one on the right hand side with a picture of some wolves on it. I'm playing one of those howls. And then the add I'm using here is add to combat. And then I'm selecting each of these wolves. And then on that last one, where I've got add to combat, I'm just using player tokens add. So when I click this, it changes to that woodland scene, it plays that wolf howl, it adds all the wolves and all of the players, so all of the tokens that are on here, it adds them all to combat. It doesn't start combat, um, so if I'm up here, I can do combat begin. It doesn't start the combat, but it adds, adds everybody straight into combat immediately. So that's kind of a, quite a nice way of just one click with a button, bam, everybody's in the combat. I haven't got to go through and add them all manually, which is quite nice. Now if I, I can start that combat um, and then I can end that combat whenever I like, get rid of it. And I've got a button on here as well just to end attack and that's just going to take my scene away of the wolves right hand side again. So that's a little addition I just made just to make that a little bit more slick. I don't want the tokens actually visible but I do want the combat tracker so I put that combat carousel tracker, um, the carousel combat tracker <laughs> mod, I've added that on to handle combat. Now I'm not using any of the MIDI QRL, I've not even got that um, active for this one at all. We're going to do an old school, they're going to be rolling their dice from their character sheets we're going to be adding our damage and stuff themselves so it's going to be much less automation on this I'll automate a couple of things on the dm side through buttons but nothing else right uh, barovian sight so my next button this is not changed we've got this one um, and of course heavy fog as well as it starts to get foggier and heavier as they come towards it now i've decided to change slightly um, and i've gone with using the rose and thorn so if i click this we get these two children so if you know the module you know who they are and how that works i'm not going to give it away in case there's players watching um, but they're going to appear and they're going to talk to the party um, about the monster in their house uh, and then the party once they once they get into that discussion they can point to the house that they're referring to which of course is the death house so that's back following the module a little bit closer and you'll notice I've also changed my image for the death house here as well so on that that's when those players will move theoretically towards the death house if not they should be encouraged by the fog and then we will change scene so a uh, bit of a weird video because it's kind of the showcase I already did, except doing it again with some updates. <laughs> uh, this epic name, I'm blaming you for shaming me with your setup looking so beautiful. Uh, I wanted to make some of those changes. Every opportunity to be better we should take, shouldn't we? Um, so, that's where we are. The next video in this series will be the Death House itself. Uh, and setting that up as an adventure and whether we're going to use battle maps or do it all theatre of the mind um, a lot of the death house isn't combat there's not much combat in it really so it might be all theatre of the mind we shall see um, thank you for watching appreciate it obviously if you're not subscribed please do so that would be really really helpful really helps out the channel we need to hit that 500 subscribers um, which makes a big difference um, makes us a, a proper serious channel uh, really do need to hit that. Thank you very much guys, you take care and I'll see you in the next one.